guys, Larissa here with your labor nurse. Um, pop it on here today to talk about vaginal exams, something that a lot of people dread <laughs> during labor. Down in my basement today, my husband's working upstairs, so I'm gonna do it down here in our little dungy basement. Um, again, as I say in most of my videos, I'm not a doctor or a nurse practitioner. I'm just here to educate you as if I am your nurse in the hospital, but just to give you a heads up beforehand. Um, and to kind of make you feel like you have more of a thorough understanding of the labor process when you're in the hospital. So, um, vaginal exams, if you check out a previous video where I talked about triage, um, that's a lot of times the first time that you'll be checked. Um, that's another term that we use is to be checked, aka to have a vaginal exam. Um, and that's to make sure and for the nurse to be able to report off to the doctor or the nurse practitioner where you're at with um, your labor process. So there are different terms that we use in labor. It's like early labor, early labor, active labor, and things like that. And your dilation status um, kind of tells us those things as well as your contraction pattern. So um, what are we looking for when we, do, when we do a vaginal exam? So this is gonna be very um, focused on the anatomy. Uh, sorry if you don't wanna hear about it, but I think that it's good to understand what is inside your body and why the nurse is having to do this. So you obviously have um, your vagina that they go through. And so the goal for the nurse is to be able to at least get like their um, first two fingers, I guess it's their whatever, their pointer and their middle finger, um, because that is what kind of helps us determine um, the dilation. So there's three things that we're looking for if we're able to feel them. We're looking for dilation, meaning how open is the cervix. Sometimes it's what we call stretchy. Um, it's a weird term, but I'll try to explain that a little bit more as we go along. Um, so dilation, how far open it is. Again, it can be zero to 10. And then the other thing we're looking for is how thin it is. We call it effacement. So when you go to deliver, you're at 100% effacement, it means it's ridiculously thin um, and there's little to no, basically there's no lining around baby. Um, it's possible though for you to be 90, 100% really at any point of dilation. A lot of times the numbers will match, um, but you might see someone dilate and have an effacement of 50%. So they might be like six centimeters, 50%, or nine centimeters, 75%. So it's it's a big percentage. Um, you'll hear us talk about that, but 100% is the end. And for dilation, it's zero to 10. And then the other thing is that we're looking for the station of the baby's head. Um, so from the pubic bone, Plus means that you're going below it. So you're like adding to the pubic bone. Um, minus means that you're above it. So there's three different stations. Um, you can be minus one, minus two, minus three for a baby. This is above the pubic bone. Or you can be plus one, plus two, plus three. Plus three is like, this baby's coming out <laughs> and you better prepare yourself. Um, plus one and plus two means that you're definitely progressing. That baby's head is definitely coming down. Um, what you typically see is that as the head comes down, the cervix dilates. Now, are there cases where the baby's head is really low and the woman's not dilating? Yes, and there are different reasons for that. Sometimes we don't know, sometimes we do. Um, and then other times the woman will dilate and be complete, but the baby's head will be up really, really high, which is where you hear the term laboring down. Meaning that yes, the cervix is open, but in order to save the woman all the work of pushing the baby all the way down, if they're comfortable and if they're not feeling pushy, we can let the, ba the baby's head come down to at least that zero or that plus one station so they don't have to push for so long. Um, I would say you see this typically done more often for um, a first time mom just because Patty has a lot of work to do because it's never done it before. So. Vaginal exam, you're, we're looking for dilation, so zero to 10, effacement, which is how thin the cervix lining is, and um, the station of the baby's head. So why is it so hard sometimes for the nurse, and why does it feel like it takes forever? So in um, earlier labor, to be blunt, I suppose, when we go in to do a vaginal exam, Sometimes the cervix is super, super up there, like past the baby's head. So sometimes we can feel the baby's head in the, um, 
it, so you have like the vaginal wall and then you can feel the baby's head pressing down and we have to go up and behind it sometimes to find the cervix, especially when you're in early labor because the cervix has not moved to more of a mid position or an anterior position and dilated more. As it does that, it becomes more in front of the baby's head and then the baby's, baby's head is able to be felt through the, cervi through the cervix. But when it's not dilated very far, it can be up really, really, really high. Um, and so that makes it a harder check for us. Um, if you're not relaxed, it can make it even harder because you're clenching your muscles together and you're putting your bones together and it makes it 10 times more difficult. Um, so what I tell women is I say, breathe. Um, I, it will be quicker if you work with me and you try to relax and you close your eyes and you think about something else. Um, sometimes if I know that you might be a difficult check, be, um, I'll have them take their hands and sort of like what you would do if, in a workout, put them like right behind um, their lower back. And sometimes that can just kind of lift up your pelvis and make it easier for me. Um, there are things like that. So sometimes I will do that in order to make it easier. And then sometimes if I'm not able to get it because my fingers are shorter, I have to have another nurse come. Um, so the more you work with me and the more relaxed you are, the easier it is for me to be able to check you. Um, so that is what a vaginal exam is. When we, you might hear the doctor in the office say that you're one thing and the nurse say another thing. It's really hard. Vaginal exams are somewhat subjective. So my two might be somebody else's three or my four might be their five. It when we, we know when you're complete and we know when you're closed. The other numbers in between, obviously we can tell, but it's kind of, it, it is subjective. Um, they have these little, they come in trays and they start with like what a zero and a one and a two and a three and a four and all those things feel like. And then we learn with our fingers, like if you're able to get one finger in, it's one. Or if you're able to only get the top of your finger in, it's like half a centimeter. And then for me, um, I mean, this is a lot, but this could be a two if I have both fingers on top. And then if I can put them next to each other, it's my three. And if I can stretch them a little bit, it's my four. So those are things that I have memorized. It's nothing that you need to know, but that's what's happening when we check um, is we're using, because we can't see, so we're just going by feel. And then um, the other thing that I was going to say is for dilation, sometimes it's, a mucousy um, lining down there. It's very soft. Your cervix has a outer portion and an inner portion. The outer portion is what you touch initially from the vagina. That inner portion, sorry, I'm saying, yeah, yeah, outer, inner. The inner portion is um, what's closest to like the uterus and to the baby. So with that, you can actually have funneling, meaning that the, um, the outer part of the cervix is opened, but the inner part is still closed or a different size. Meaning when we go in and check, it's like a triangle. So we're able to like feel the cervix this way. And so maybe I have like a three centimeter or something like that. And then I go in to go like feel the baby's head and I'm not able to go through. Or I'm only able to get like a little part of my finger through. That could be funneling of the cervix. It's not a bad thing. Um, sometimes if women go into a um, labor in their really early in gestation, so they're like 31, 32 weeks, it's kind of nice if they're not totally open. Um, so we look for things like that as well because there is a outer and an inner portion. Most of the time they match. Um, and then you can actually stretch to whatever number you are. So since it is like a floppy mucousy lining sort of, um, it could be kind of stuck together a little bit and so like rubber bandish and so if I'm able to go in and even though it might be like this when I touch if I'm able to stretch it you know to like here then I'm like oh we're like a five six so something else that we're looking for checks become much easier as you get farther in labor because the cervix moves from that upper to that more mid or interior position so that it's easier to check and the baby hopefully is lowering um, his or herself so that your cervix is dilating and all those things. I know the cervical exams seem awful, but it's our, really one of our only ways to tell um, how you're progressing. And the other thing is that it is so important for you to be 10, 10 centimeters before you push. Um, there can be a lot of damage done to your cervical lining. 
um, into your cervix and things like that. And so it's really important that before you start to bear down and push that your nurse checks you. Uh, you might be feeling pressure and that's totally fair, but if you have a decent amount of cervix left, you do not want to put that pressure down there. So that's why it is so important. Um, the other thing is that if baby's heart rate is reacting and having more dips and more of those decelerations, if we check you and we see that you've made change, it gives us more of an explanation of why baby might be reacting that way. Um, Sometimes as the nurse, I will check if the baby starts having a really funky pattern because my hope is that your cervical change might explain baby's reaction to labor and things like that. Alrighty, post um, questions below if you have any. Please like and share, um, and I'll keep putting those content videos up there. Thanks, guys.